It's finally time, fellas. Can you recognize? Sorry, I think my microphone's really loud. New camera. Can you recognize what lure I'm copying? A Guggen bait. Since its style has been founded, I need to try my hand at it. That revolver Guggen bait, you know? I figure a toucan lure would be perfect. One wing, I want the plop. I'm going for plop. One wing, revolving in the center of the body, through wire. They probably can't have the plop because it needs a really big... You need a paddle like that, hollowed out. And when it comes around and hits the water, it makes a bloop because of of that. My wing's gonna be pointy, so it probably can't be all that ploppy. Yeah. A toucan revolver. There are 40 different kinds of toucans. 40! 40! Sorry, I'm looking at my audio levels and stuff. New camera. Working out a few kinks. Toucans are found in small pairs or flocks. Sometimes they wrestle with their enormous bills to establish their dominance in hierarchies. They come from Africa and Asia. Some toucans don't look so ridiculous. Some, some toucans don't have giant bills. Yeah, sometimes they can look like that instead of that. It says that woodpeckers are just a distant relative. So the smallest adult toucan's about 10, 10, 11 inches tall, and the largest one's 25 inches tall. It weighs over a pound. Generally, they're about the size of a crow, it says. It's got a big round tail. The neck is short and thick, and it's a forest-dwelling bird. They do not travel long distances. They stay in the forest. That's why they don't have to have big wings and fly very much. They have strong legs, rather short and strong legs. They have paired toes on both sides. So they grab stuff like that. The majority of toucans do not show sexual dimorphism. That's the condition where the sexes of the same species exhibit different characteristics, particularly characteristics particularly characteristics not directly involved in reproduction. Happens in a lot of animals, like ducks. The male mallards look different than the female, you know? But apparently with toucans, they look all the same. There's no difference. That is in their coloration. The bills of the females are usually shorter. So some of these birds' cases, their enormous bill is longer than their body. Their, the thing sticking off their face is longer than the rest of their body. You can't help but feel kind of bad for that bird. Oh, but it says despite its size, the toucan's bill is very light. So they, it's like carbon fiber bills. They got bone struts, spongy tissues. It's like an engineer's dream with different structures and bones and support things inside of its very lightweight carbon fiber bill. So the bill, it's got forward facing serrations that used to make people think that they're a carnivorous bird and they, they cut meat with their serrated bills, but it's understood today that they just eat mostly fruit. And apparently their carbon fiber bill is a thermoregulation system. It keeps them cool. It's able to modify blood flow inside of its bill. So it's a thermal radiator, so it cools off blood that goes in, runs through some surface area of cooled off bill. Has a network of superficial blood vessels supporting a thin horny sheath. <laughs> apparently elephant ears do the same thing large thermal radiating flaps on an elephant. And it's also used to intimidate smaller birds, their large bills. <laughs> they plunder into nests and just slam their giant beak around. And they ransack suspended nests built by smaller birds with their giant beak. Wow, they're mean. Toucans are not nice. A toucan's tongue is very long and narrow. That kind of makes me want to open up that beak and stick a long, narrow tongue out but I'm not gonna do that. Some of the things that scientists use to identify a toucan is several tail vertebra. Bra, bra, bra. The rear three, they're fused and attached together. On other birds of uh, similar species, they're not. They're ball and socketed and movable. On a toucan, their last three vertebra are fused together for some reason. But because of this, toucans may snap their tail forward until it touches the head. The tail's back there and they snap it forward and hit their head for some reason. And this is the posture that they sleep in, often appearing simply as a ball of feathers. Wow. They are highly social. Most of the time they occur in groups of 20 or more birds. But if you scroll up to the top, toucans are usually found in pairs or small flocks. Wow. Weird. And then there it says, they're highly social and most species occur in groups of 20 or more birds. Thanks, Wikipedia. That's why these are fun facts. I'm not saying these are real facts. They're fun. 
Apparently it's possible to keep these birds on an insect only diet. So they don't have to just eat fruit. They'll eat the eggs of smaller birds and the nestlings. Wow. This is the Anakin Skywalker version of bird. But apparently when they reproduce a lot in their nesting, they like to feed fruit to their, their nestlings. They don't eat their own nestlings. They provide fruit to them and then they eat the other birds' nestlings. But this apparently provides a ton of vectors for seed dispersal. Dispersal? Is that a word? Dispersal? It feels like a word. But due to their ridiculous appearance, a ridiculous appearance. They are among the most popular of birds in the world. Where they're native, they were hunted as food for a long time and also kept as pets. Their bills were often used for decoration as well. In some places, anyone who discovers a toucan nest is deemed owner and entitled to sell the bird within that nest. Guinness Beer used to use a toucan as advertising in the 30s and 40s. Of course, Fruit Loops, the breakfast cereal, uses a toucan in its advertising. Toucan Sam. And the Brazilian Social Democracy Party also had a mascot of a toucan. Political parties with mascots. Isn't that just a little telling? Just a... Anyway, it's a bird with a big beak. What kind of noise do they make? So this is the croaking sound the toucans make. I like to say it's a... I just wanted the sound. All right, fun facts are over. That will be a mortised slot that fits that tab. Will be glued in such as with the wing facing this way so the water catches down here to throw it back over and then the tip catches the water over here. Makes me concerned for needing enough weight in the belly. Probably gonna double up, put weight up here and down here. I think I have everything covered though. I'm confident in function with this. The tip of this carbon fiber beak <laughs> keeps breaking and stuff. It's super glue and baking soda and it's all ugly right there. Once I'm done doing everything I will, then I'll, I'll smooth that back off and make it look nice. It's always precarious, mortising, straight, square, rectangle holes. I typically pull one of these out. And if you're not incompetent like me, you don't even touch the surface of that mortised out rectangle, and it's nice. But when you get in there, it doesn't really matter. You can like, you can uh, pass that line a little bit. No one will know. It'll just hold glue and make the bond stronger. There's all these things you can tell yourself and you, you can get a little sloppy down there. I have a long ways to go, but look at that. Little Toucan Sam's got a wing. That's gonna be a strange looking lure, having just that one giant wing off its side. Is that off-putting? That's off-putting to me. Maybe it's just the symmetry issue and it's, it's fine. Whopper Plopper's got a thing off the side. Not that big. Eh, about that big, actually. My toucan is the same length as a 190 and the wing's about the same size, so I have faith. I've been graced with a fantastic idea. On this side, Drill out a little hole and put a little bit of lead. Trying to balance this segment with the equivalent weight of this wing. Do they do that in a whopper plopper? I don't think they do. That way you're not acting against the force that the weight of this segment puts on that side. So it's like, it should spin pretty freely. That's a pretty good idea, let's try it. We need to figure out how much this weighs and then drill a hole on the other side and do stuff. Well, three eighths fits just fine. Why, why was I even worried? I, you didn't even know I was worried. That's right, the video has become incoherent ramblings of a bait maker once again. Every video devolves into this. I'm gonna be 90 years old and just... Remember that time I made a short clue or that clue? And this drill press has the press feature, but I use it about half of the time. That should be about a quarter ounce of lead. I mean, does, doesn't that look like a quarter ounce of a jig head? Like, where's a quarter ounce jig head? Eh, we might need a little more. Okay, regardless, that's all of the assisted balance that this gets. Wing assisted balance. I'm coming up with sophisticated words and stuff even. It is time. To, whew, you guys almost fell. 
Not the new camera. Now hold steady and pay attention to me cutting this bait into three pieces. All right. Wow. <laughs> I oopsied. Whoopsie doopsie. Dang it. Gotta keep that bait rolling. That ain't too big of a whoopsie dipsy, but I don't like where it is. It's right next to the, the wing joint connection and visible. I have a solution. Overstated issue solved. Fantastic. I think the lead's hot. Ten drops. Hopefully ten drops of lead is a quarter ounce, because that's what that is. I just thought about it for a second, and I could have before and aftered it and weighed it. But this whole piece weighs .24 ounce, so just under quarter ounce, and the wood is probably 10% of that. So the wing still weighs more. I think that is fine, though. We've established quite the counterbalance. Counterbalance. Now we need to establish the ballast balance, but we can't pour that yet. We need wire and the bait. Assembly is required after everything. Ooh, I might have to drill holes through this bait because I got to put the wire through and then tie it off. That's tough. That's hard to do. Challenge accepted. What's my tubing? Where's my tubing? Brass tube. So the wire is gonna be laid in the front piece and it will come out the bottom of the beak right there. That'll be where your first treble hook is. Go back in the bait and then shoot out. And that's the wire. And then I'll put on my prop piece and then put on my butt piece and tie it off. That'll hold everything on. That's how it's gonna go. Reclarifying in this video quite a bit. Okay, it lines up good. It's a good flush fit, but that doesn't really matter because it's not going to be flush as it's rotating. That's pretty cool. That's not how the lure is going to work at all, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> There's a lot of carving left to do. A ton of carving. I got to carve the wing. I'm going to be carving on Lexan. Okay, let's get some wire bent. That's pretty clean. Here's the line tie right there. I think a hook up front pretty far on the beak is going to be useful and then way off the back to get away from this flareage right here. Sometimes stuff like this on baits can really impede your hookup ratio. You need to get your hook away from that back here. It's kind of hard to send that wire down. See it in the beak? I don't, I'm not about to get a tool out and start pressing real hard on that. Yeah, I just gotta keep pressing. Side to side. Yes, the length of that Hook hanger is intentional. I want it off the body. That is a free spinning toucan wing. Fantastic. That weight certainly is going to make a difference. Okay, I've had this realization a while ago, but I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't have a solution, but I just think I came up with a solution. This tailpiece doesn't need to be... Chip, what are you doing? No, bad dog. He's chewing on some beads. Um, there's gonna be weight at the bottom of this back piece, so I think I can... I, and there's like a swoop de doop -de right there that's gonna make this segment sit upright more. I'm pretty sure. So with those two four, like that'll just sit upright and all of this can kind of be more free, which will probably prompt the wing to be more loosey goosey and spin better. So yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just put the weight in, carve the bait. We still have to weigh this bait. All right, I did 12 drops each hole. It's about a half ounce, 25 drops is what I found. This Lexan is about as fun to carve as it looks. It's a very hard material. I'm just gonna try to not cut myself. Should look pretty sweet when it's done though. 
You gotta put so much force behind the knife. <laughs> Makes you uncomfortable. Oh man. I'm just moving my thumb out of the way. Nope. <laughs> I might have to bust out the Dremel. That is seriously glued in. Very, very, very glued in. That just spins so fantastically. Wow. That's gonna plop. If it doesn't plop, it will splash. It's gonna do something. Straight through that Lexan. All right, this bait's feeling solid. I'll see you when it's ready to paint. I'm just gonna throw some polyurethane on this wood. We're gonna get straight to painting. Wicked white. Just mixed up an extremely dark gray. This is gonna be the base coat color. Other than the beak, I have to tape off the beak here. I didn't mask it off perfectly, but it doesn't really matter. This might seem like a really strange way of going about things, but it'll make sense. Never before tried technique. I'm gonna try to make this look like feathers. That is putting off the feather vibe. I'm liking this. Whew, I've stayed steady so far. I think the entire beak of this thing is gonna be hand painted with this brush to get the effect. The effect. For the toucan's beak, I say it's best to start out with just wicked yellow. Give the whole thing a nice brushy coat and then move to that darker yellow. Oh, that doesn't even, that doesn't belong. Sunburst, orange. And then there's a red stripe at the top. Can't forget about that weird orange ring around their eye. Oh boy. Oops. That kind of looks cool though. I'm going to run with it. Okay. Now on to the black thing on the front. And this toucan w will, other than the eyes, will be done being painted. Toucans have extremely blue eyes. I don't really know where the glass is gonna contact on those eyes I made, so I cover the entire inside of the eye socket with medium thick black super glue. I like the black super glue because it gives a backing as color to the eye. It should be just fine behind the pearl. It looks very realistic compared to a real one.
The toucan is assembled. I assembled it off camera. I got a lot going on in here right now, fellas, so I apologize if I assemble my toucans off camera. Fantastic news, though. That's the news. That spins nice. Very free. We shall see if my angle is set correctly and if I'm a good bait maker or not. I think it'll spin. I think it'll work great. I have managed to get permission back to Kevin's amazing house pond. Fishing with the toucan. Toucan? I assume that's the best plan. This is like the size of a 190 Whopper Plopper. I have with me Spencer from River Certified. He's also going to take advantage of the amazing fishing. First cast! That's a sunfish? Oh no. That thing's a monster then. Let's see how the toucan works. It sits, it floats, that's important. <laughs> it works fantastic. Let's see if we can catch a fish first cast. You guys hear that? It's not a first cast kind of bait. <laughs> They're feisty in here. Yep. <laughs> There's some sort of fish steroids in this water. This is one of the best working top water plopper baits I've ever made. That giant wing really does the trick. Spencer's three for three. What are you fishing with? Midnight chicken, man. Midnight chicken slick swim? Nice. Really? He might have a wiper. No. Nope. Large mouth making runs. That feels like a bluegill. It's a 1.7. It was a bluegill. It's a beefy one. Whoa. See, this is what the 1.7 epic prey bait catches you. Every cast. Guaranteed. Go get yours. <laughs> Look at this monster. That's not hand size, that's dinner plate size. That is gorgeous. Be free. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, this one's weak. Is this a crappie? A little crappie, I should not have caught you. You were too recently stocked. That's a pretty one. Lots of blue. What does what Spencer got? It's staying down a little. Well, if it's a catfish. Could be. Good fish. Right. I'm putting as much heat as I can with six pound line right now. I want to see you. Nope. It's got to have stripes. Different ideas. <laughs> it's probably been about a minute. Yeah. Got into the leader. I saw a little bit of something. See it? That looks like a wiper to me. Yep. About a one pounder. It looked kind of sizable. That's sizable. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Maybe a four. There's something fishy about how hard these fish are. <laughs> Three. All day. Maybe, oh yeah, four. Maybe, maybe four. I have a scale you want. You want to check? Yeah, unless you want to. That's okay. Thanks for bringing me here, Nate. You're welcome. Be free. These lures are lasting longer than I thought they would. Give them that. <laughs> Bait plastics is pretty tough. I mean, it's just so like soft. Look at this sunfish. Okay, I thought it was way bigger. That <laughs> but might be but one that's of the pretty big. Biggest sun like bluegills I've ever seen. I thought it was a bass at the, at the beginning. Yeah, it's huge. I and mean, I'm just looking at his belly. Look how tiny its mouth is compared to. Right. That looks like a small mouth. The colors. Mm-hmm. It looks like a frankenfish. Wow. I thought that was Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, I thought it was a large mouth. I mean, it's a bluegill. <laughs> Gonna throw this in there. If you want a pond of that quality, go to bjpond.com. Get your pond checked out, get your pond maintained, get your products for your pond. 
bjpond.com. If you need to figure out what's in your pond, if you need feed for your pond, if you need a dock built, if you need, a, if you need anything done to a pond, go to bjpond.com. Thank you, Kevin, for letting me fish that place. That is amazing. Okay, we're at the pike spot. That pond didn't do the trick for the toucan. I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, You're doing it for comedic entertainment. Thanks. Thanks, Spencer. We're going to fish here first. We're going to see if we can catch a pike, bowfin, whatever. And then we're going to be in the boat on the river after that. Wonderful. Oh, you can't get away from Larry. <laughs> no, you can't around here. If you're fishing with me, that's all you catch. That's a decent one for here, though. Really? Yeah. All right. Two more casts. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is amazing. Spencer's having a wonderful day. You know, it's just a couple thousand pounds. Nah, that's it. That ain't nothing. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Spencer's on, snagged, snagged a, <laughs> a <kid>. channel. <laughs> Those eat lures. I'm not a buffalo connoisseur. Smallmouth buffalo, it's official. Likes the slick swims. It does. Is that what it was on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely fish. Lovely. Oh. That wasn't the fish that I bit. I just had a bite though. You had a bite? A thump, thump, thump. I think it's a walleye. We're pretty quiet about it. Drag? Nah, it's a well, buffalo. It's a buffalo. Three inch prey bait. Crushed it. Oh, I apologize. No, it's no big deal. I hope you forgive me. I didn't want that fish. <laughs> Crappy. <laughs> that is what we waited for, fellas. It's official. Actually, that's kind of a nice crappie. Yep, 1.7. Prey bait. I wonder if that's what I've been missing. Solid crappie. Yep, you could eat that. Be free. Believe it or not, that was a walleye trip. Not a single walleye was caught by either one of us. For some reason, the smallmouth buffalo were biting and the crappie, that's all we caught. All right, I think Spencer got a drum too. Not ideal. Wasn't even fishing with the toucan. Ah, man. How long should I give this bait? I'm going to go to a pond with pike in it and then I might go back to the pike spot or some backwater spots that are like the pike spot. Might even take the kayak. This is probably gonna be another 10 hours. Let us let the intense top water incorrect time of the year, 10 hours of fishing commence. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for the opportunity. It is getting to be that time of the year, fellas. That time of the year when the fish are biting, just not in the way that I'd prefer. I need to make a vow. I need to make a commitment. No more top water lures until winter's over. <coughs> Heater's kicking in even. Do you hear that? I'm almost panicking. Winter's coming. I did all that I said I was gonna do with the toucan. It was, it, that was more than 10 hours. Probably like 12. It's a sad time of the year when the top water bite stops. I am already ready for 2022 open water season. I'm ready. I'll just be waiting. I hope this microphone sounds better. The other one had all the volume coming from the left. Needed to mention Spencer's channel, River Certified, in the description. Go check it out. He just got back from the Amazon River. It was a good trip. Good fishing content. Go check him out. On to the next bait. A Guggen bait. Bro. Makes me concerned for your mom. Be free. Ah, uh, that's it. That ain't nothing. Small flocks. Remember that time I made a shark lure that Nope. <laughs> <laughs>